I'm not live, so. Reconnected. Alright. See a cute game on stream. Are we live? I think we're live. Yeah. Looks like it. All right. Should I let him know he's ready to go, or? Ah, uh, yeah. I guess just give him a countdown in the chat. Okay. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna calm down right now. Excellent. Well, hello, everyone. This is Klonoa. I am not the commentator for this game. But I that's am. okay. Alright, Golden's the commentator for this game. All what right, is so this... going on? Hold on. What is this giant red floaty big thing? Uh, uh, allow me to uh, explain as best I can. Alright. So, this is uh, Klonoa, Door to Phantom Eel. It is a 2.5D platformer. Think something like Kirby 64. Um, it's also a very simplistic platformer. So the general idea is that you can run, you can jump, and you can toss uh, your ring in front of you. So it's going to be pretty straightforward for the viewer to kind of understand what's going on. Interesting thing to note is that Haritomo was one of the runners who submitted to HDQ. So he was actually a candidate to get into HDQ this time around. His run got rejected, and almost immediately after his run got rejected, he offered this for JRTA. So I thought that was really uh, kind of heartwarming to see. Like Even though he got rejected from HDQ, he still wanted to help the other runners that did get accepted. Always noble. Just thought that was, I guess, like if there was a sportsmanship equivalent in speedrunning, that's good sportsmanship right there. Nice, I agree. All right, hold on. What's the big fat red thing again? So the big fat red thing is um, a, essentially a projectile. I think it's an enemy you pick up and like you turn into something you can use as ammo. Yeah. No, we like, Kirby. Like all good games, this has a minecart stage. Yeah. Uh, is this the sub two minecart? Call your shot. <laughs> Cute. It is a pretty adorable game. I don't know. It's kind of got. A, a, I would guess. I would say it's a cult following type game. I mean, there would be yeah. people that'll argue and say it's. A bigger deal, but I definitely think uh, it's a franchise that's less recognized, so it's kind of nice to see a showcase here. Oh yeah, the series has a lot of dedicated fans. Huh. I like the cutscene for the uh, <laughs> yeah. falling connector there. God, these things look adorable when they're fat and ready to be thrown. So Klono is a cat. Is that correct? Deadeye is a duck. Alright. I'm on pace. Anyway, we'll wait a minute. Might as well go do some stuff. 
So for those who don't know, this is JRTA3. Uh, basically, we are, we were looking to raise money to get uh, two fantastic Japanese runners in Suzuri Bako and ZZ Hockey. And thanks to all of your efforts, we were able to raise the money necessary for them to come. So because of all of your efforts, we will get to see Suzuri play three games at AGDQ. He will be part of the Kirby's Dreamland 3 co-op run. He will be part of the Ducky Young Country Trilogy Relay Race. And he will be part of the Kirby Superstar 100% Race. And joining him in that Kirby Superstar 100% Race is ZZZ Honky. So that's going to be awesome. Thanks to all of your generosity, all of the support you guys have been doing throughout this marathon, whether it's been posting, whether it's been tweeting, whether it's been sharing it, or wherever you shared it, you know, we appreciate all the support and of course all the generous donations that we've gotten, so thank you. But just because we've raised, we've met our goal, we've raised the money for them too, we're not done. We're still raising money. You know, all your all the proceeds we get from now on will be going towards the Doctors Without Borders. So Please, we still have some cool bid wars and prizes and file names to donate for, so we're not done yet. Like, for instance, we have the cool Star Wars Jedi Knight bid war going on. That's going to be a little bit later, probably in like, I think, six or seven hours from now. So you can kind of decide whether the uh, we're going to be playing as the light or dark side. So light side's at $50, dark side's at $5. It's not that big of a difference, you know? You know, we, we had some crazy bid wars earlier with the Oracle of Ages. No reason why we can't get to that later on. And uh, if that's not your cup of tea, we got some, uh, yeah, got some file names. Uh, let's see, we got the Link's Awakening DX file name. Uh, we got two uh, two file names right now, really close battle. Iwata is at 42 and Dangori is at $40. I'm sure those are both names people would love to see there. Um, if that's not your cup of tea, we got Final Fantasy VII file names, got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, yeah, uh, McNuggy is the cloud name right now, but you know, who knows, something could take that. Uh, I got Bone Mom for Tifa, you got uh, Baron for Barrett at $15. Uh, I think it's safe to say nobody's taking Aris, so that one's pretty much a lock. <laughs> But, uh, Oh My Dog for Red 13. Oh yeah. My Dog. Oh My Dog. And you got Boom Shaka for Sid. <laughs> that was a tonic donation, so... I was wondering if he was gonna throw in, like, a Laka for another name. <laughs> like, you, got, you, can't, you, you gotta complete the phrase. You can't just have Boom Shaka. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe he'll have another donation tomorrow. I don't know. There we go. Maybe Barrett will become Laka. But, yeah. Uh, or, you know, probably one of my favorite, uh, Incentives or bid war, you should say, is the a game bid war between Lion King and Aladdin. Who's your favorite Disney uh, game? You know, right now Lion King has a pretty big lead, 180 to 70. But you know what? I have a feeling that that would become pretty close as we get closer to that. So get your money in for that. You know, that one could end up being really fun bid war. But yeah. Um, other than that, sit back, enjoy some Planoa. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll drop some knowledge here because I know a thing or two about Quinoa. All right. So one of the things that you'll notice is that Quinoa can't move when he's not holding his ring. So in order to compensate for that, uh, he can still jump. So the trick is it's always faster to throw the ring while you're in the air. Like essentially you're wasting frames if you're trying to do it while you're on the ground. The more you know. The more you know. I'm just dropping you all these fun tidbits. I wish I knew more in depth, but uh, the other thing is, uh, it's kind of got movement similar to the way it works in Super Mario World, where you have like oscillating values. So, you know how like your top speed's not constant in Super Mario World; it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing here. There's uh, like pairs of numbers that are your max speed, and you can preserve it. I don't know like how uh, realistic it is in real time to do this, but essentially if you have a pair of numbers that you like, um, you can just sort of uh, take that with you from the last frame you're on the ground. So like you're hopping, you know, you can kind of preserve, it's called bunny hopping. That's more likely um, 
something you would see optimized in the task than in a real time run. Yo, these spike balls are look sinister. I don't think I want to touch these. Good music though. I like it. Oh yeah. Oh, he just gave him a dumpster too. Get a really good sense of the the two point five D there. I mean, you're still kind of limited to the directions you can move, but incorporating that kind of vertical element of the boss being in front of you. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I like the Yoshi story overworld too. So yeah, I mean, the other thing about bunny hopping too is that uh, Plano's speed actually uh, accelerates faster in the air. So in addition to like having that kind of high level optimization of like, do I have the, the coupled numbers that I want? A simpler thing, like an easier way to put it is just jump as often as you can. So it's quick. Uh, or half I suppose. I guess, with the bunny hopping. In a sense, yeah. And, and you still have, like, sort of the uh, traditional platforming things, too, of, you know, like, slopes generating some speed for you and things like that. So. Yeah, I like Is there a storyline behind this game? Is there a storyline behind this game? Like all video games, there is a storyline. Good. Good storyline. You didn't ask me, like, what the storyline is. Uh, sure, I didn't. Do you know what the storyline is? Yes, I will tell you about the storyline. Yes. So, basically, uh, the general gist is that they're in this fictional world called Phantomiel. Hence the name, Klonoa Dorf Phantomiel. Ah. Um, there's basically a... a uh, the village is kind of split into, like, five zones. Right? Are you following so far? I'm following. Yeah, yeah. I think I got this. Okay. Um, so essentially, if I uh, remember correctly, is that there's essentially like a dream energy that exists in Phantom Meal. And it's made up of everybody's forgotten dreams. Oh. And this 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 energy is like gathered, it's like it's harvested, um, and that's what creates this world. I know you're thinking I'm totally making this up, but just bear with me. I mean, I'm just looking at this game. This seems totally plausible. It's very much all about like just a fantasy world that is created. Uh, just that sprite of holding this fat thing. Oh. Alright, so now we, we've got a cleverly disguised minecart. Uh, it's basically like that Mario Party minigame where you're just running back and forth and you hope you don't get hit by the bow and arrow. Perfect. Howdy, howdy. I'll be uh, helping commentate this run since I guess I, I know a lot more. <laughs> you do. Thank you. Shantel yes. helping us at the last well, moment. I, I thought I was doing so well, you know. I, <laughs> I mean, your commentary has been fantastic, Holden. But well, sometimes, you know, you get, you know. sometimes, you know, coach calls you up to uh, pinch hit and you got to do your best. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So he grabbed this move oh. early on to do a sequence break here. Just uh, not sequence break, but basically just to skip waiting for an extra enemy to spawn. Because basically he had to break that block to be able to do a jump up here. So instead of waiting for two enemies to spawn, he already has one. But here I'll have to wait for two enemies to spawn, because first he has to knock off the shield on that and then hit the switch behind it.
And then he's gonna grab one more enemy to do do a similar thing again. Basically, it's just to, to so he doesn't have to wait for the enemy to spawn. It just saves like a couple, like a second at most. A donation. So I got twenty dollars from Shibaki Nine. Says I'm glad to support two awesome players as Japanese. And good luck, Harutomo. Thank you for that donation. So what we saw there is a bomb enemy that uh, when you, once you grab it or engage it, it'll uh, start to get ready to explode. And so you use it you generally to to prepare for time release switches or time delayed switches. And he's going to be just uh, trekking around this map a little bit to uh, turn everything back on, basically. Because everything got shut off to prevent his progress, to prevent Kanoa's progress. Like that, or is that yeah. Uh, yeah, you're already able to do that. It's basically when you jump again after jumping, uh, you'll hover for a short period. Oh. So basically, there's a cutscene there that mentions uh, something about the the uh, the gears being turned off, and you have to turn them back on. Um. You basically need to know the combination, but it's just real easy trial and error. So there he has to hit that switch, but it's on a timer, so he has to hit it and then run to that door as quickly as possible, because the door will close uh, if you're not fast enough. And uh, basically that up there was Joka, who um, is an underling of the main antagonist of the game. Um... Uh, and he's basically just trying to foil your advancing in the, the plot. <laughs> so I understand there's uh, two versions of this game. I'm assuming he's playing on the PlayStation version, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, there's the the US version, the Japanese version, and then there was a second release of the Japanese version on like a greatest hits on the PS2, I believe. Um, from what I told, from what I'm told, the greatest hits is technically the fastest in terms of loading. But the issue is with that and that Japanese version is that you have an unskippable intro that whenever you reset, you have to play through, and it's like about three minutes in length. Whereas in the U.S. Okay. version, it, you can skip it. And then what was the situation with there's there's a Wii version too, isn't there? Uh, it was remade for the Wii, but it's. Uh, Mostly a separate game because there's a lot of rebalancing they did. They made it a lot easier uh, instead of uh, taking six hits, six hits to get killed. It's like uh, ten now, and oh, wow. uh, they cha they redid the voice acting and redid the script, and it's generally looked unfavorably upon by fans. Okay. But the changes they made. So uh, I remember you guys were talking earlier about the mechanic with uh, turning the moves into the the balloons. Basically, uh, he has a special ring that allows him to turn enemies like in into those uh, balloon forms and use them in, in various utility ways, either to do double jumps or to damage other enemies or to hit switches. Okay. And uh, this is probably the most uh, difficult boss in a speed run. Uh, it can very easily screw you over if you uh, don't hit them quick enough, and it can give you bad patterns as well. So basically, the first couple hits are real simple, and then um, as it goes on, uh, he starts doing different things. 
and he starts out throwing these uh, giant apples that you have to uh, clear when you jump over. I like these boss fights. I mean, they seem kind of claustrophobic. Yeah. So he did a damage boost there to get to the other side to hit that uh, jump panel, which normally you have to wait for him to do another round uh, going across before you can hit him. And he actually had very good RNG on that fight. Sometimes it can be very punishing. Because I've seen fight, I've seen that fight go for an extra few cycles just because of that RNG. So there, he was trying to kill that uh, a creature to get past it, just to just move along a little faster. But he wasn't able to to destroy it in time. Oh my. And he tried to do the same thing there. So since he hasn't hit checkpoints that yeah, he starts back at the beginning of the level. And basically, uh, those those clocks in the bubbles, uh, when you hit those, it creates a checkpoint. And there'll actually be a section in the late, uh, later in the run where he abuses that fact. Because all your progress is saved, it's just, uh... The only thing that isn't saved is the, uh... Is where is where you're at. <laughs> Actually, sorry, I misspoke. Uh, your progress isn't saved. It's everything just goes back to the checkpoint. But there's basically a point later in the run where he's gonna abuse that to skip a bunch of uh, stuff. And I'll explain that a little bit better when I get there because it's been a while since I've uh, watched this run, but I used to watch it quite a bit and study it. So basically, that jump, uh, he's very careful to avoid that bubble, because um, basically those bubbles are villagers, and every time you save a villager, it adds uh, one second to your time at the end of the level to count it out on the on the map. And I get a 100% run, you want to collect uh, all six villagers in each level, and uh, all the gems too, because there's 150 of those uh, dream gems in each in each level. But luckily, an any percent doesn't really matter. Just a reminder to, uh, with the changes in the schedule that we had earlier, I know people were wondering about uh, the shift that we had. So coming up next will be the Gal Gun race, and then we have uh, RKSF, Ro Rosenkreutz, Stilett, Freudenstockel. Oh my goodness. Is, what a is, pronunciation. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, ich habe vier, vier Jahre in Deutsch gelernt. Yeah. Okay. Is Galant even a verb? I don't know. It's been too long. Anyway, I don't know. I took German back in the day. Hey, man, I'm impressed. Yeah, I, I would have stumbled all over that. Yeah. Yeah, like Goldman was saying. That's what we got coming up next. Stick yeah. around. Okay. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew when that was, because I know some people earlier were asking when is RKSF, so... It is coming up. Hetfield was gracious enough to uh, swap around with us while we dealt with some scheduling issues, so we really appreciate his support. But anyway, back to this run here. We've got... Uh... So here he's going to jump across some bones. Uh, they fall down when you, land, when you jump off of them. Mm -hmm. Or when you jump on them. Can you hold on to an enemy, like, indefinitely? 
Yeah, you can carry them through uh, doors and stuff as long as uh, they're tall enough to let you. So oh, you can cool. carry it up to the level if you wanted to. There's actually a point earlier in the run when he was riding a, a minecart that he did that. So now this boss is a uh, very RNG heavy. Uh, basically, he has different things he can throw out, and what your goal is is to hit the glowing lights on his face, and you have to hit all eight of them to defeat the boss. And sometimes they'll give you bad patterns that prevents you from doing so. This reminds me of a uh, tropical freeze boss. Yeah. Very similar. I, don't know, I I love these boss fights. Just I don't know the the recurring pattern with them is it just seems like they have I mean they're all slightly different but at the same time they restrict your movement a lot. I like that. I think that's kind of cool that you're constantly trying to dodge. Yeah, it gets really crazy later on. All right, so now on this level, uh, there's he has to collect four orbs to open the door. Uh, and, and each pa each uh, path has has a different orb. It's Yoshi's Island. Yeah. So you notice how there there's checkpoints in the background. There's a one point in the level where he'll be abusing that with a, an enemy. Basically, he'll be throwing it in the background, and to hit one of those, and then he'll be intentionally taking a life just to spawn back there to save um, from having to traverse one of these pathways. And you got it, first try. Very nice. That can be a little tricky for some runners. So he's just going to damage boost through those. Grab the green orb. This song always reminds me of that one. It's like uh, the loneliest number is number one. I don't remember the name of that song. <laughs> like it, like when, like when it plays that little bit of chorus part, it reminds me of that. I I can see it. I guess hear it would be the appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> don't, worry right <laughs> don't worry about me right now. Don't worry about me. There's only one day left. We'll we'll make it. Yeah. Oh. You'll survive. So how frequent is it in this run that uh, you would say he's maybe flirting with low HP? I mean, is it a common thing to just take damage throughout or should we kind of expect, you know, if he's getting down to like one heart? Uh, damage boosting is, is, doesn't occur too often, but it occurs a fair bit. Generally, HP is not too much concern. At least at his level of play. Okay. But when you play casually, it's it can be really easy to die. This game is fairly tough. So now he's hitting the those uh, those poles and those posts in the background to create pathways when he wraps around. But uh, the nice thing is, is that there's generally enough hearts around that you don't have to worry about dying. Generally, you'll just die if uh, you have bad execution. My kind of game. <laughs> Like, the only RNG in this game is uh, for the boss fights. Uh, everything else is pretty scripted. So the thing about... Uh, you guys were talking about the jumps earlier. Uh, it can save, like, a... Uh, like a couple of frames per jump, but it can also lose you a couple of frames depending on the on the frame you jump on. 
So, yeah. but but the nice thing is, is that more often than not, you're gonna save frame, so it's more beneficial to do those jumps. To just keep and, doing it. Yeah, it's kind of like Mario World, where it's like the cape speed can be different or whatever, but as long as you keep adjusting it, you eventually find the right one. Yeah. And when you're going down slopes, you don't want to jump because it's faster to walk down a slope. Uh, basically, it was just like looking through the task notes and finding out about that information. It's like uh, jumping can save like up to like a minute over the run uh, if you get perfect jumps. Wow. So now in this section, uh, the light's gonna change from dark to lightness, and uh, that also changes the enemies and uh, certain platforms that appear. So when it's light, you can you can take enemies and grab them and damage them. But when uh, it becomes darkness, uh, you won't be able to to grab them at all, and they become invulnerable, but they can still hurt you. So that was interesting. I noticed that he wait, waited there before he entered the the room initially. I wonder if that was to uh, force it to become day the daytime or light when he left it when he left it. So that seemed pretty new to me. So basically, the platforms only appear at, at or you can only use the platforms when it's dark. But at the same time, you become more vulnerable since you can't grab enemies. He grabbed a nice uh, free extra life. So now he's going to do damage boost through through those uh, moves. So basically, for damage boosting, you have to turn around uh, before, right before you get hit. Otherwise, you'll just bounce back the way you came. So now he has to grab an enemy to hit that switch to uh, open the pathway. Oh, that's very clever. Normally there's like an enemy that you have to carry an extra enemy with you to, uh, to get past that. So now he has to go activate uh, all the switches in order to uh, access the next section, which is involves going all around this uh, maze. And he basically needs that, that move in order to uh, get up there to the next section. And that was the whole reason of activating those switches. Because you can't grab uh, any others because they're, they're plated armored. They're armor plated. All right, so now we're facing Joka, the guy who's been uh, stymieing our efforts this entire time. So basically, he'll be wandering around the middle of the arena, and we have to hit him with uh, the moves that, that spawn. But uh, you can only hit him directly. If you hit his uh, fists, then it won't damage him. And after uh, three hits, he'll transform. He'll go to the center and transform into this giant um, turtle beast. And during that time, all the moves that spawn are invulnerable, and he'll uh, do various attacks against you. And so your goal is to uh, walk on all the uh, the bricks until they're all yellow again. And then I'll turn it back to daylight. That's a colorful turtle thing. Yeah.
and then you have to do that at least one more time. It's basically, uh, if, if you're too slow, he'll change anyways, but he'll always change after three hits. But the more times you hit him, the more uh, erratic his movement gets. So what exactly is Joker? Is that a clown? Is this a turtle? I mean... Uh, both. <laughs> Kafka. Kafka. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is like a, a mega evolution right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this this arena uh, actually you might recognize it. It's the uh, final arena of Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. Oh man, yeah, this fight's really frenetic. This is cool. Yeah. This only uses two more hits. Nice. So now we're going to be getting into the last series of levels. So now that Joka has been defeated, he's going to call upon his master to uh, finish, try to finish us off. And basically, we're trying to rescue the diva of the kingdom. And basically, we will sing a song to restore the world back to its, to its rightful or natural order. So now he, he's going to attempt to do a, um, a, a sequence break here of sorts, where normally you have to wait a little bit longer to do this section. It's basically uh, there are things that, that's, that drop in your way like that, and he's able to get to it a little bit faster so he doesn't have to grab the enemies on the side. And so here he's going to be doing hops on purpose because uh, the the dust that that appears when you walk uh, causes a lot of lag. was grooving along with the music. <laughs> <laughs> this is this game has a really great soundtrack. That's pretty cute. Yeah. So here he's just trying to clear the path to the next level.
All right, so now we're getting to the point where uh, platforms will disappear uh, when you walk on them. So now you gotta be quick. So, what's the deal with the visions? So, that's like, I guess, each person's like dream that's not coming, or? Well, hmm. It's hard to describe. Basically, Klonoa is from another world, and he's basically considered a dream walker. Basically, he's able to go to other Phantom Isles, which is what the worlds are called. And he's currently in this one for. Uh, Whatever reason, I honestly I, I don't remember the story all that well. I'm sorry. That was okay, no problem. And he's here to help uh, save the diva from the nightmare uh, that is basically trying to engulf this world. Perfect. By the way, have you gotten your uh, hate mail yet for your description of Klonoa as a cat? Um. No. Oh, I thought for sure you'd get letters. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to check the inbox. Yep. Check check the check the mailbox. Uh, they don't deliver on Sundays, but. Uh, oh, I see. Well, Sunday they deliver on Sundays if you pay extra. There you go. There you go. It's Saturday night in the West Coast. So. It's true. It's true. If your mailman delivers it on Saturday night. So if it's not a cat, then what is it? It's a Klonoa. <laughs> He's uniquely him. Yeah, technically it's not an animal of our world, Dark Man. So basically, he was waiting for the enemy to, to go down, so because those, those switches are on timer, you have to hit them all three up all three of them within a certain time frame. And right now I'm just trying to remember the name of the final boss. I think it's, it's been escaping me this entire run. I think it starts with a G. <laughs> so yeah, that's, what, that's what Wikipedia is for. Let's find out. Uh, it's 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 Gadius. There's Gadius. Gadius. That's Gadius. it. Yeah. And he's basically the big bad dude who's trying to engulf the world in a nightmare. Gadius. I'm just gonna say Gradius. <laughs> that's what it reminded me of. And so the Gadius fight is uh, broken into uh, two separate fights. So basically he just did a clip there to skip uh, having to open up that pathway. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's having trouble hitting that third switch, or that first switch. Because basically, once again, these switches are on a timer. Now he's gonna re—he's gonna reset the room. There we go.
I didn't actually know this, but Caveman also plays this game. Yep, Caveman held the world record for quite a while. And I think the difference between his time and Harutama's time is one second. Yeah. It, I mean, at that point, it just comes down to boss RNG and, like, how good your execution is as well. But these guys' level, uh, generally, it just comes down to boss RNG and how they're feeling that day. Shouldn't be that surprised that Caveman is uh, competing in a PS game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fair, it's fair. Does Caveman still run uh, Klonoa? Uh, I don't think I've seen it from him recently anyway, if he does. Was the last I saw him play it was at uh, SGDQ. Right. And then I think he streamed a little bit out of it afterwards, and then I don't know what happened to him. Found some Oops. other PS game to play? <laughs> or a few. No, no, he went back to Floating Runner. Oh, okay. But yeah, Caveman's another great Klonoa runner uh, when he actually does it. And he's just a great guy overall. Alright, so now just... we're... Oh, yep, yeah, good. Now we're fighting, uh... Gadius. And then, uh, after that, we believe we fight Nahotome. Unless this is Nahotome. I don't remember. Like, there's two people. So basically, you just have to hit him in the, uh... In his cape. And you want to avoid those, uh, glowing orbs, uh, that are littered around the arena. Because that will send you to the outside of the... of the circle. And you don't want to be there. Because then you have to... Uh, yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> and basically he'll just throw fire at you and you have to get back into the ring again. This is some... Bizarre... Bizarre... Uh, graphical design, I like it. Yeah. I think our, our friend McNuggies420 probably appreciates it if he's still... <laughs> Just thinking about that. Like, Whoa, this game is really cool. Oblivion. Oblivion. trying to think like what's holding this franchise back because uh, I, it strikes me as an entertaining like, blind playthrough like I kind of want to play this now. Uh, there's actually a lot of Klonoa games. There was uh, four of them on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, the play okay. There's two of them on the PlayStation. Uh, there was this game at a spinoff called Klonoa Beach Volleyball. And then there oh, was Klonoa <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Then there's> <laughs> 2 on on the PS2, and then there's the Klonoa remake on the Wii. If your game gets a beach volleyball spinoff, you know you've made it. I mean, you're right, <laughs> up, there, right up there with Dead or Alive. And there is also um, a Klonoa game on the Wonder Swan. If uh, people are familiar with that is. Mm -hmm. So now we're fighting uh, Nahotome, I believe. And basically the goal of this fight is to uh, uh, put am put the Moose's ammo into the cannons around him, and that'll be the fo your form of damage. I saw him practicing this fight before the run started, too. Yeah, it can be a little bit of a mean fight, uh, especially in the next phase. So now we're gonna damage him. Or yeah, okay, I was just waiting on him to attack. And completely annihilate him. Wow, I'm just down to zero. <laughs> but now he's gonna be a nice guy and swallow you whole. Yeah. 
So this fight goes into three phases, and now we're entering phase two. Oh my gosh. It's final destination. <laughs> I wonder why he fell off. Are you playing safe? Maybe. It's new to me. So basically now you have to grab the moves and hit the four crystals. And uh, just avoid getting hit. I'll have to ask him about that because that's, that's new to me. So now he's going to be a nice guy and, uh, and present you another weak point to hit. This one now moves around in addition to the level uh, tilting back and forth. Or side to side. So now he's uh, getting tired of trying to digest you and he's just going to spit you back out. But now the level is uh, changed now. Now you have these platforms that can disappear on you. And the cannons are now below, and you have to wait until they line up in uh, an empty space to, to arm them. And this is the final phase of the fight. You just let me know when to hit time? Sure, I can call that out. GG. GG. Wahoo. <laughs> Wahoo. <laughs> Wahoo. Alright, so now we get treated to a nice CGI cutscene at the end that uh, everything goes back to normal. And it's very uh, uh, heartwarming and sad. Oh man, it's like a Final Fantasy IX cutscene. Yeah. Oh, maybe. So now D.Va is restoring the world to balance, to restore the damage that Nahatom had done. But Klonoa doesn't belong in this world, and so he has to go back to his uh, Phantom Isle. Live footage of Sonic and Knuckles arguing over a ring. <laughs> so thanks for having me for commentary. I wasn't planning on doing this tonight. Uh, thank you for stepping in. Uh, I, you know, obviously we wish we were experts on every game, but uh, definitely could use the help here. So yeah, it was funny. Like during the opening commentary, I was like, "Man, I wish I was on there because I know a little <laughs> bit more." And then yeah. Kasusby is like, "Hey, man, we need somebody." Like, like, oh, yeah, he, yeah, of course, he, he heard me and Darkman. He's like, oh, man, we got to bail these guys I, out. I got to fix this. this is so... Oh, man. <laughs> I, appreci I appreciate you, uh, like, subtly telling me that you don't like my commentary cast. That's all right. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. I was enjoying I, it. Our mailbox I mean, would have been full, dude. Oh, uh, we're going to get letters the, all the Apparently, uh, at the beginning of the phase two of Nahatom, uh, the fall was to skip the animation of the eyes appearing and the gems generating. People are asking about my friend on Discord. People are asking about the runners Twitch. It's on the uh, 
extremely out there. Harutomo. Okay. Uh, yeah, twitch.tv slash Harutomo, H-A-R-U-T-O-M-O. Yep. So please give him a follow. Again, just a reminder, I said this at the start of the run, but uh, Harutomo was one of the runners who submitted to HDQ, did not get accepted this time around, and he still immediately turned around and signed up to be in JRTA to help out uh, Pierre and Cesare, who did get in. So I thought that was really um, just generous of him to do that. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy, and he runs uh, basically all the Klonoa games. Actually, yeah, he runs all the Klonoa games. He's even ran the Wonder Swan version on emulator. Because uh, currently there's no way to capture directly from a Wonder Swan. All right. Well, I think we, uh, we all right. have completed the run. All right. Well, you have a great night and good luck to Oxwas for uh, and uh, the other person for Galgun. Oh, yes. We got Galgun, Oxus, and Simmons coming up next. Thanks for stepping in on commentary again. Yeah, no problem. Um, anytime. Just uh, let me know if there's another game I might know about and I can help out. <laughs> so maybe not good. tomorrow. <laughs> but next time. All right. So coming up, we got Oxus versus the other person. Stay tuned, everybody. I'm going to start calling Simmons that now, I think. In a world where SRL doesn't want you to see this game, two men go head to head. They're still in my audio. I know. I'm just so excited. Actually, I wanted to stay.